Hey, thanks for visiting my channel. This is Randall, the digital landlord. In this video, I'm going to show you the top 20 reasons you will fail at rank and rent. And of course, with these mistakes, I have some really great solutions. Here's a copy of the list here. I'll put it in the description. We'll see if we can get through all 20 in the next 15 minutes or so. Once again, thanks for stopping by. If you're not already subscribed, do that. We've got a ton of videos here that will teach you this business model. What is rank and rent? Well, it's simply building a website ranking it, renting it out to a local business owner, and collecting weekly or monthly cash flow. Here are some five-star reviews from the folks that I've been teaching this business to. So I really do this business. And you're not going to find, by the way, any other channel like this, guys. I'm one of the only channels that shows you the process from start to finish. I hold nothing back. I show you four pillars. And in the private group, I actually share all of my successes and my students' successes as well. So I'm showing actual checks and stuff like this. Um, because my biggest fear, there's going to be a ton of gurus coming over from every other type, from Forex to real estate investing, that will eventually make it to the space if we don't keep it, you know, high and mighty, high and tight, and, uh, you know, do it right. So let's just get into the video, guys. Check this out. I made this, uh, you know, little presentation here. Top 20 reasons your rank and rent business will fail and the solutions to each one. Let's get to number one, misguided keyword research. What does that mean? That means you didn't do the right keyword research. Therefore, you're not going to get any calls. So do it right. Go get a tool like Ahrefs or Google Trends. These tools are fairly inexpensive. They have free versions that you can use. And they have paid versions. In fact, a lot of folks aren't aware of this. This particular tool costs $29. If you use something like Google Trends, this is free. Here I put in concrete contractor and concrete paver. And you can see who outperforms who. You can also see the slow parts of the year. So it's a really awesome tool. You can break it down by subregion, metro, or city. And just a quick tip, usually it won't give you the city. It typically will give you the subregion, 50% of the time the metro, and I'd say like 10% of the time the city. So some really great tools there. Next up, speaking about the city, it might be too small and you won't get enough calls, or it might be too large. It's gonna take you forever to rank, so don't do that. You want to stick between, say, 25,000, 50,000, up to 250 or 300,000 in the city. You want to start out that way. Now, that doesn't mean you can't go smaller or larger. I'm just talking about search volume here. Just think about every time somebody searches something, that counts as a one, right? So you want something with thousands of searches, not like five searches a month, right? So um, it's okay, by the way, to stack them. So if you have one keyword with 300 searches and another one with 350, another one with 50, if you've stacked 20 keywords and you're pretty confident you can get those pages built out and ranked, well, now you have, you know, six, 700, 800 searches a month that you can rank in that particular city. And that'd be, that'd be your best bet. So um, here's a city here, Las Cruces, New Mexico. This would be perfect, by the way, 114,000, right? As soon as you find that city and you've picked your niche, by the way, there's over 3,000 niches. Combine the two, go buy the domain, set up your free Gmail account, create a Gmail account, and you're good to go. Now, here's another problem. Some of these niches have seasonalities, fluctuations, like I've shown you here on Google Trends. Here, you can see it slows down quite a bit. It's the month of December. Here again, the month of December, and of course, December here. So be mindful of that when you're building something out or deciding to get into a niche. Um, it'd be terrible if you started something like in November, and it happened to be a niche that you didn't do the proper due diligence, and you just think you absolutely suck, and January, February rolls around, you've gotten no calls and you give up, right? That's why I'm here. I've treaded these waters before. Number four, you've never built a website. Huge, huge problem, right? Well, not to fear, solution's pretty simple. You can have my company build it out or hire of development, or build it yourself. There's plenty of free tools out there that you can build websites on or tools that are somewhat affordable. I mean, Weebly is something like 1750 a month for website building and it's drag and drop. It's very simple to use. Drag over your picture, drag over your headers, drag over text boxes, put in the content, maybe use an AI tool or hire some team to do it for you. And there you go. You've got a five to 10 page website for carpet cleaning in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Number five, wall of text. What does that mean? Let me show you an example of a wall of text. You can really get a feel for this. Do you see this here, this example here, this heading? Check this out, this heading and text here. You don't want to build a website if you're going to do it yourself. 
and get all this great, you know, so-called content, just dump it on a page. It's not going to work. You want to chop things up. You have to think visually. We're visual creatures. And when somebody visits your website, it's got to hit boom, boom, boom. They have to do the inquiry first, the search query, land on the page and stay there for long enough in order to absorb what's going on. The best way to do that is to chop things up in headings, smaller pieces of sentences and paragraphs and text. And of course, support them with images and bullet points, images and bullet points, and maybe a frequently asked questions area. So don't do the wall of text, put on your creative uh, hat and make a beautiful page. Next, speaking about headers, missing call to action. You need to have a call to action that pops. What is a call to action? Well, a call to action is simply something that literally is just that. It tells that visitor, hey, call now to do this. Act now. You've seen them everywhere. And, you know, a call to action could even be a simple form or a phone number. As long as it's near the top above the fold and throughout the home page, those are your call to actions. And if you don't do those call to actions, you're just giving away free information. This isn't a library. You want people to customers to come to your site for your lead buyer and you want them to fill out the form or call. Call or fill out the form, fill out the form or call. That's it. The next thing that's going to be a fail, big fail for you, the top 20 reasons your rank and rent lead generation business will fail is going to be no FAQ sections on each page. This is a huge rank, ranking factor. Let me tell you why. When you think about somebody looking up a local business, many times they don't just look up carpet cleaning near Las Cruces, New Mexico, or in Las Cruces or near me, but they'll ask a question, something like, how do I get um, you know, animal stains out of carpet? Is there a company that can get ink stains or blood stains or something, you know, wine, whatever it might be? And for that reason, you can rank your service pages much higher and get much more traffic than your your competitor if you have an FAQ on each one of those pages. In fact, build out a whole FAQ page and then on each one of the service pages add at least three to five questions and that's going to help you out greatly. Make sure you're, the, you're successful in rank and rent. The next thing that I see folks fail at is they don't add a lead capture form to the website. It's exactly what it sounds like. A lead capture form is basically a form that collects information from the potential customer. Now remember, when they come to your page, naturally you want them to call, but there are, depending on the time of day and the reason, some folks who just simply don't want to call or bother anybody to talk to a person. It really just depends on their personality type. So you can see here, by clicking get a quote, this website does a good job of adding the form. Now usually, they'll usually be on the upper right-hand side or upper left, but this web developer decided to place it into a clickable link here. Now, the next reason folks fail at Rank and Rent is they don't have any backlinks going to their website. Now, this is not an absolute must. Depending on the size of the city and the search volume and how good your page speed is, you can rank without any links at all, but I don't recommend it. Chances are, if you're getting into anything good, it's going to have some competitors, and those competitors are going to have some backlinks. Specifically under the umbrella of backlinks, they're going to have citations. These are a specific type of backlink that are coming from a website, such as Dex Nose or something like this. And it looks a little bit like this. It shows the business name. Sometimes it'll show the address and zip code, and it most certainly will show the phone number and an area to visit the website. And this is your backlink. This will give you some validation through a do follow link or a no follow link, which is adding to the authority of your website. And typically if you hover over the link on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, if you're in a Chrome browser, you'll actually see the website down on the left-hand side as you scroll across each one of these. So most certainly focus on getting citations. My company offers citations, by the way, you can always order, say, 100 or 200 citations for each new business and website that you set up. Here's another reason I see folks fail. Their content is absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. What do I mean by terrible? Well, let's take a look at um, this website here. This website's doing some things right, but they're doing a lot of things wrong. This website's not doing a good job of explaining what their actual service is in the city that they're in. So for example, 
if you come up to the top of the site, although they have a nice logo, I use a tool called SEO MetaClick. By clicking that, you're going to see the title of the page is Carpet Repair Chicago, but they don't have a description whatsoever. And if you scroll down the page, there's not much content at all. In fact, they just have testimonials and a bunch of zip codes. It's really a form of keyword stuffing. This is a terrible homepage with respect to that. Now, again, there are some good aspects to the site, but if your content is terrible, you're just simply not going to rank. Content, as the years have gone on in SEO, has become more and more important to the SEO overall. Number 11, the 11th reason I see folks fail at rank and rent is the keyword search volume is way too low. So that goes back to setting up a tool like, say, Ahrefs and doing that search volume re research first. And if you do that properly, it'll make sure that you have a really good keyword volume happening each and every month and even during some of the slow months so that you'll actually be getting calls from potential customers. Let's move on to the next reason why folks fail at rank and rent. You know, lead generation business takes time and having a professional website is absolutely critical. So if you have a website and there's no photos, yeah, you're probably going to fail at rank and rent because it's just like the saying goes, oh, a photo is worth a thousand words, right? A painting is worth a thousand words. And for that reason, use photos. If we go back to our exa example here for the Chicago carpet cleaning website, they're doing a darn pretty good job of this. They're showing repairing of this damaged carpet. And in fact, if you go to each one of their pages, each one of their pages has a nice high quality photo located at the top. And some of their pages, such as their before and after, have several photos that really tell the story of what their service is. So the takeaway there is to make sure you have a high quality photo, at least one on every page, and that the, the photo itself has something called an alt text. What does that mean? For SEO purposes, if we return back to the site, we select a page with a photo. If you right click the photo, typically more towards the bottom or middle of the page, not necessarily the header because these can be web, web photos and not JPGs. Come down here, right click and hit save and you'll notice something. A good webmaster has named the photo a keyword and described the photo efficiently. Whereas a webmaster who didn't really take the time to do so, will leave the photo named something really generic like photo 001. So it's very important when it comes to SEO that you're mindful of the photos themselves, and making sure that the images are high quality, that they've been named a keyword, that the alt text is filled out. And you can see here's some examples of just that through the PNGs and JPGs. So that's a great tip there to make sure that going back to SEO, that your website will rank well. All right, number 13, keyword cannibalization. Another reason I see folks fail at rank and rent is because they didn't think through each individual page and their purpose. You know, a website for local businesses could be five pages, 10 or even 15 pages. Some of mine have as much as 20, 30 pages if I've also selected a blog. And for that reason, you don't wanna have pages that are so closely related that a search engine like Google is gonna have trouble determining which one is going to be ranked for which keyword. For example, if you have carpet cleaning near me and carpet cleaning Chicago near me, yeah, that's going to be very difficult for that search engine to decide ultimately which page is going to get the traffic for that keyword. In fact, if you use a tool like Ahrefs, you'll be able to determine which pages are having trouble with keyword cannibalization, and you can quickly either decide to delete the page, redirect the page, or add in something called a canonical, which will choose which page will get the keyword. All right, let's look at the next reason here. You don't know where to find lead buyers. That can be a huge problem. If you're not too sure where to find lead buyers, it's gonna be really hard for you to actually rent these properties out. So where do you go for lead buyers? I could do a whole video on this and I believe I have something up on my channel that's a quick and dirty for this. But for now, just go to Yelp or another website called Thumbtack. On pages like this, you can go enter in some type of service-based niche and find plenty of lead buyers that will be ready and willing to take your leads. And being that these websites are free, you'll be able to find plenty of lead buyers who are ready to take those leads. So check out Yelp or Thumbtack in order to find lead buyers. The next reason I see folks fail at rank and rent, if they're starting a lead generation business and they're determining, you know, pay per lead, they're talking to lead buyers, uh, is they're just not doing it enough. What I mean by that is they might start getting a list 
and call each person once and then just never do it again or think that they have to go find another list of 20 new lead buyers that they haven't tried yet. You have to be very thorough when you're talking to lead buyers. And what I mean by that simply is that you have to hit them in many different ways. For example, we might start on Facebook and start sending messages, literally chat messages to the prospect. Then we'll send them a text and then an email and a call. Many times this happens in the one hour of interaction all in a row across 30 different lead buyers. So it's call, email, text, message, call, email, text, message, and everybody gets that treatment. The very next day, we do the same thing until they tell us no. So stay committed. Number 15 is very important. Stay committed, keep following up, and eventually you'll get somebody on the hook. Now here's another big problem, number 16. If you don't know how to position your product or don't know your product well, you're not gonna really be able to quote unquote sell it. So know your product, know its pricing, know how you're gonna position the product. If you're calling folks and they're confused, the confused mind always says no. So for that reason, you're gonna to wanna to know how to position your product front to back. I'm talking about its pricing, why you're better than others, why they should choose you over others. You specifically as an agency know your product and its position and you will take that prospect and make them into a paying customer. The next reason folks fail at rank and rent is simply failing to price the leads properly. I see this all the time. In fact, there's plenty of um, you know courses that folks sell for $500 that are missing so many parts of this or worse yet a $3,000 course that is just teaching one thing like Google Ads. And for that reason, they're failing to show you how to price your leads properly. I, I've not heard of any other uh, person out there that's teaching pricing other than myself. And it's a very simple formula. I actually took it from real estate and I apply it to this so that we're not leaving money on the table. You'll see what I mean when you start talking to folks and they hit you with that, you know, good objection, which is, hey, this sounds great. What's your price? You're going to fumble very, very quickly. So you need to understand how to price each niche and why it's priced based on calls and volume. And that is going to make that part run so much smoother. Now, the next reason people are failing at rank and rent is they're not qualifying the buyers. What I mean by that is that they get so excited just to go through the process of finding the niche, building the website, ranking it, and getting those first couple calls that they'll just say yes to anybody without really even pre-screening the lead buyer. There's a couple things you wanna look for with the lead buyer. I mean, would you do business with somebody who just started their company a week ago? Would you do business with somebody who's in a licensed field who has no license? Would you do business with somebody who has been in business for five years but has hundreds of complaints? Absolutely not. So for that reason, you need to come up with some things to ask these lead buyers to be sure that they are gonna be a good fit. Also personality wise as well. I'll give you some quick items. You wanna make sure they've been in business for say three years. It's always helpful to have some type of certification or license, something that says they're legitimate. Obviously it's a big you know, plus if they have an LLC, limited liability corporation, or if they've been incorporated, that shows that they take their business seriously and they have a corporate checking account that they separate their accounting. All of these things are great signs. So for that reason, screen your buyers and you will keep your hair. Now, here's number 19. It goes back to prospecting. If you don't have consistency with your follow-up, you're just not gonna be able to get the job done. Rank and rent can be very simple, but it's not easy, right? And the reason for that is it's simple to understand when you hear about this model, but it does have to be applied. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen folks hear about the model they fall in love with it very quickly and they just never take action or worse, you know, they go and they join these free groups and, you know, it's just sort of the blind leading the blind. If somebody has probably done 10% of it and all of a sudden they're an expert, but they themselves have, haven't received a check yet. And that leads us to the final part. Number 20, this is the biggest reason. If you treat this like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. A hobby costs, a business pays. Do this every single day in and out get in there get your hands dirty and you will have success in rank and rent especially if you hire me as a coach or perhaps you go hourly with us which we still offer 
So that brings us to joining the group. The group right now is still free. You can literally go to the website, fill out the form. I will personally call you once my assistant arranges a free call. I'll give you some free coaching and get you into the free group. If you want to apply for long-term coaching and see some success a little quicker, great. But you've got to make a splash. You've got to jump in. I've just shown you all of these things that have taken me years to learn in a quick 15, 20 minute video. And that's because I've actually treaded the waters here. So it's time to floss. Give me a follow, like, opt in, share, subscribe. Go to my website, get into the group and get your digital goodies. But promise yourself that you'll commit to this, that you'll get into lead generation, you'll find out what city niche, you'll build your website, you'll apply the SEO tactics, you'll get calls, you'll get somebody on the hook, you will go ahead and sign that party up for two, three hundred dollars a week or a thousand dollars a month, and you will wipe your hands clean and move on to the next one. That is how you can become a digital landlord, having digital assets paying you day in, day out, whether you work or not. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Randall, the Digital Landlord. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you guys on the next one.